Nissan has gone all out to keep this third generation Qashqai ahead of an increasingly competitive chasing pack in the volume brand part of the mid-sized family SUV segment. So it's smarter, classier, cleverer, quieter, better equipped and more sophisticated. British designed and built, this one's going to take some knocking off the number one spot. Despite its family-friendly brief, the Nissan Qashqai has always been quite fun to drive and the changes made here suggest it ought to continue to be. Fundamentally, this is down to the introduction of this car's new common modular family CD platform, which has provided for a body shell that's 48% stiffer and made a major contribution to a weight-saving campaign that's seen this larger model shed 60 kilos compared to its slightly smaller predecessor. You don't always feel changes like that with new cars these days, but you can here. Rather unusually, in a class where driving enjoyment tends not to be prioritised, this Nissan immediately feels a little more agile and eager than your average mid-sized SUV. An impression aided by the introduction of a quicker steering rack, which is about as far as you can go towards sportiness with a car of this kind, given that customer priorities with family crossovers usually tend to lie elsewhere primarily with comfort, helped here by the way the stiffer body shell allows the conventional torsion beam suspension that most models use to be a little softer than before, only bigger bumps causing thuds to be felt in the cabin. That setup's been lightly embellished for this third generation model, as has the mainstream 1.3 litre petrol engine that most customers will choose, which gains a light dusting of 12 volt mild hybrid electrification. This four cylinder unit is offered with either 140 PS and manual transmission, or as in this case, 158 PS and a choice of either manual or Xtronic CVT auto transmission. Go for the auto and you'll have the further option of specifying your Qashqai with four wheel drive. But that'll have an impact on efficiency, which in the manual front-driven Tecna spec 158 PS model we're trying here is rated at a best of 44.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 145 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you want to do better, then you'll need to talk to your dealer about the only other engine option on offer, Nissan's e-Power self-charging hybrid drivetrain. This is a proper hybrid. The power plant's 1.5 litre 158 PS petrol engine is primarily there to act as a generator to charge the two kilowatt hour battery pack, which then powers an electric motor driving the wheels, which get a combined petrol electric output of 190 PS. One of the challenges of reinvigorating a car based on a successful formula is to get the balance of fresh and familiar just right. And this Gen 3 Qashqai might just have hit the sweet spot, incorporating some recognisable elements into a contemporary shape that's been usefully evolved. At first glance, you might think it quite similar to the previous generation model, but look again. The double chrome trimmed V-motion central grille is much deeper and the upper and lower parts of the headlamps, now with the full LED variety, are separated by this colour-coded Qashqai branded trim strip. At the side, the Qashqai meets the crossover fashion criteria of the moment. Floating roof, optionally available in black, tick. Kick up body line over the rear wheel arches, tick. Black cladding for the wheel arches and the lower body. Tick. It's when viewed from behind that this J12 series Qashqai design is most restrained and perhaps most familiar, with wraparound rear lights that offer a gentle evolution from those of the Generation 2 model, now slimmer and separated by spaced out letters below the Nissan badge. So, it seems the Qashqai is familiar, yet bang up to date. Has Nissan followed a similar approach within? Pretty much, yes. You'd feel a sense of familiarity here if you'd regularly use the previous generation model day in, day out. The logical layout, the gear shift angle, and a seating position that's halfway between SUV and family hatch. Yet you'd also appreciate that everything's been brought up to date with smarter switch gear and a central touchscreen that sits on top of the dashboard rather than being buried into it. Plusher models get this advanced Nissan Connect screen in this nine inch size, and it's complemented further up the range by this 12.3 inch customizable instrument display. 
softer touch materials and more sophisticated instruments seek to promote the feeling of greater luxury than you might expect from the price tag, embellished on upper spec models by classy ambient lighting and the largest head-up display in the segment. In addition, there's a reasonable amount of storage space, build quality from the Sunderland plant feels pretty good and Nissan's even thought a lot about how this Qashqai smells inside, taking steps to ensure materials don't create any unpleasant odours as use and age gradually erode the new car aroma. Time to take a seat in the rear. Backseat passengers should be reasonably happy here. There's 28 millimetres more legroom than in a Gen 2 Qashqai and headroom is up by 15 millimetres, or at least it would be on a model without this huge glass roof, which, if you can live with a slightly lower ceiling height, gives an agreeably airy feel to the interior. Six footers should just about fit, and this rear bench doesn't do anything clever like reclining or sliding as it would do in a rival Volkswagen Tiguan or Skoda Karok. And you wouldn't be very comfortable sitting for any real period in the center of it, legs astride the transmission tunnel. Still, contoured seat backs and the space you get to slide your shoes beneath the front chairs make this part of the car feel reasonably spacious. Right, let's finish with a look at the boot. The hatch reveals a wide and deep aperture and the lips sensibly low. Nissan has redesigned the suspension of this Mark III Qashqai, giving a useful load space capacity increase of 50 litres, providing 504 litres with all seats in place, enough to take up to seven carry-on cases. The plus side of spending a bit more money on trim and avoiding the first two spec levels is that you get this super useful luggage board arrangement. These two removable lower panels create a flat cargo base with a usefully sized and invisible storage area below into which the parcel shelf can fit. Once everything's retracted, up to 1,447 litres is freed up. Useful, but nowhere near class leading. Still, that'll probably be quite sufficient for most customers. So, how to summarise. Will fresh converts be attracted to this rejuvenated model? That's difficult to say. There's an awful lot of competition from an awful lot of very talented rivals out there. And the Qashqai is no longer the bargain it once was. Still, this remains a car from a brand that clearly knows its market. It's still a benchmark and it's still a starting point for anyone buying in this segment.